Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show, hosted by Rob Scribner. Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. Hello, everybody. This is Ranger Rob, and this is Easy Street. Welcome to the show. I also want to remind you, you can find Easy Street on Spreaker on several other platforms, uh, also on Good Talk Radio, and now being featured, actually, we're live on Cutting Edge TV. So I'll uh, get the opportunity, just go down to our description below, and you'll see actually uh, all the different platforms that we're on. And today is a uh, kind of a special show I wanted to do for Easy Street that helps me, um, well, on the last video I did for Ranger Rob Country Living, I asked the question, if you're a prepper and you spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of uh, uh, preparations, cost for equipment, et cetera, for prepping. And it's just, say, you and your your family or you and your wife. Uh, do you, I have to laugh, I have a German shepherd <laughs> outside the studio saying, please let me in. Anyway, uh, do you prep for, let's say something happens, do you prep for family outside of your household or friends or your neighbors, or maybe just someone in need, especially if an event already happened. And I want to say hello to uh, Farmstead Smith and also Thomas Hamilton from Scotland. That's a long way. It's so nice to have you. Um, you can count on us to treat you really good here, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> so uh, I, I have no idea what time it is over there in Scotland, but uh, it's got to be kind of late. So anyway, uh, in prepping, uh, Sherry and I have uh, worked really hard in prepping for uh, at least six months. And we're talking about uh, very large pantries worth of food. We took the time to learn how to do canning. We've learned how to do dry canning. And we've also just purchased um, <laughs> up to $4,000 for this, a freeze dryer. And so, you know, we put a lot of um, investment into prepping. We're talking probably thousands of dollars. Now, when I talk about prepping, I also, oh, nine o'clock. When we're talking about prepping, um, everybody does it at a different level. Now, I'm not talking about building a bunker in the backyard or anything. Prepping can be not for shit hitting the fan or all the time, but you know, depending where you are, what regions you are, uh, it could be a, a power outage, it could be a storm, it could be tornadoes, it could be earthquakes. It could be a lot of things, or we have a dispute with another country and it knocks out our power and things, or we have uh, food shortages, which, hint, hint, I think that's been happening, uh, political uh, downturns, or maybe even civil war, we would have a heck of a time getting food, and we could probably lose a lot of our utility and services. So uh, uh, I, do, I do have to put a ticker on here, just a uh, Kind of keep the uh, so you guys know what the subject is. So you spend all this money. We're talking some pretty good money. Preppers, uh, you know, be, it's not just food that we're saving. We, uh, hi Flynn, um, we're not just saving food. We're saving, uh, like for example, I have solar equipment that will help me charge electronics um, if they're even operable. Then I've spent money on a. Uh, like we have a well on our property. So I had an electrician come in at $1,500 to put in a special bypass system so I could connect the generator, which I have a 15, uh, 5,000 um, watt generator. So no matter what, we have water, unless I run out of fuel. <laughs> but I got, I've also got lots of fuel on hand. We're talking thousands of dollars. Um, not only that, uh, special lighting, batteries, backups, um, all kinds of, uh, of course, uh, the freedom sticks and the uh, freedom pellets to go with it. Uh, for those of you who know what that means. Uh, yeah, I mean, so we have a lot of investment. Is this all paranoia stuff? No. Uh, some A lot of the stuff like freedom sticks and all that stuff I had anyway. Uh, generators. Um, Oh, Chandra, you too. Hello, how are you? Uh, Chandra, are you guys a prepper over there? Uh, on your ranch, I see. So we uh, we have 
thousands of dollars of food back up. We uh, have dried food. We have a lot of food you can buy that can actually last on the shelf for a long period of time. But my big question today, and this one's sensitive, is do you prep for friends and family? Not just, I mean, like your household is your family. You prep for that, of course. But what about, say, your kids might live nearby? but they don't bother the prep, yet they know their mom and dad are preppers. Um, uh, what if you have friends or neighbors next door that don't prep, maybe they're elderly or whatever, do you help support them? Hi, Aaron, how are you? Um, I'm just sorry, I'm just going through some of my list there. So anyway, so let's say a problem comes up and, and let me give you a story. And I don't know why this bothers me. This is bad. This is really bad on my part. So our, my sister-in-law came down here uh, for Thanksgiving and uh, we love her to death. And uh, she's from Washington state. And she uh, came down and she asked us, can I buy, <laughs> well, she did buy, buy toilet paper from you guys because literally we cannot get it in Washington. Well, of course, she knows we're preppers. And of course, we have two and a half cases of toilet paper stored away. And once again, I, I, I point that out because we're not hoarding. We only buy enough. We always kind of double up on things, but we don't do it all at once. Just like for canning jars, I've got tons of canning jars now. How did I do it? Well, we bought a little at a time at different places when they had them in stock. Did we hoard them? No. We tell people, please, I mean, you can prep, but you don't have to load up your uh, uh, your shopping cart and, and, and cause other people not, be, not to be able to get stuff. Time is your friend when you're doing, well, hopefully, time is your friend when you're prepping. So anyway, so she took this case of toilet paper and, and it was fine and we did it. The whole works. But here's the back of my head talking to me. And this is bad. I know this is bad. But I'm going, crap, man. You know, that's part of our supplies. So, of course, we went to Costco just a couple of days ago to see if uh, we could actually uh, uh, take the time to get some more and then replenish that. And... Uh, I could, they're out <laughs> again. It's like, oh no, history's replaying itself. But that that was what makes me angry is the fact that I we knew after March and stuff that this happened. Um, and so don't you think that some people with common sense say, you know, we're still in this crisis. And then yes, they're talking about another wave of the CV stuff that this could happen again. And it did. And you, and so we responded by building up our supplies in the last six months based on what happened in March. Well, her sister didn't, and she's very smart, very nice. We love her to death, and so if she saw this video, she would not be upset. She understands that I do radio shows. Uh, radio shows are designed to cause debate. And uh, I see uh, Farm said, she says, we always have enough to share for a short while, but supporting someone long-term, I'd rather not. I think it may feel different for those with children. And yeah, that's the that's the ethical. We got moral and ethical issues here. Do you share your preps with others? And for example, this is so stupid to be feeling this way, but you know, we uh we had a supply, good reasonable supply of toilet paper, and now it's down. Now we still have a reasonable case and a half, um, but I like to have two, two and a half cases. And I can't replace it. Now I can, I can replace it if I went like buy Mart and buy like some smaller quantities of it. And so it's not so bad that I can't actually replace it. Um, but uh, just the thought that you go into uh, and you built up things and then you, you, uh, I, and by the way, if she came down and asked for that again, I wouldn't hesitate to give her you know, give her more. <laughs> so just make sure you know where our ethics are here. But uh, what if things really happen? What if something bad happened? Like our, our grid went down, we had a solar flare, we had, um, we were attacked, or we uh, had an earthquake in certain areas, and you really had to use your preps. And then someone in your family comes along and says, 
we don't we didn't prepare and it's like what excuse do you have in the last what eight nine months not to think about becoming maybe at least a little bit of a prepper really are you guys that ignorant can you not see that how the world can change so quickly and so uh so at least prep for a month don't you don't have to do anything radical like we well i don't think we're radical but you don't have to prep for forever um but the, the more, the better. And uh, of course, if you learn how to prep and preserve food well, like for example, our freeze dryer, we'll have food that'll last us five to 25 years once we, and, and, and of course, by the way, we trying to be more self-sufficient. So I know that everybody, I haven't even looked at my nose. <laughs> I know that everybody has a different circumstance. If you're in the city, there's only so much you can do. If you're in a rural area, there's only so much you can do. And then if you can get out to the country like we did, um, then that's different. Uh, hey, Chandra, let's see. Keep in mind that some people's brains don't work that way. <laughs> he, he, yes. Uh, Chandra, by the way, is on. She said, he said, she's a sweetheart. She, uh, uh, we love her to death. So think, uh, and I'd like to talk to you more, Chandra, in the future about your ranch and uh, what you're doing with that ranch. Uh, I've heard you mention it a few times and I've never followed up on that. I apologize. And I want to remind everybody tomorrow on RV Talk Radio, I'm interviewing a guy from Montana and he calls himself the RV Prepper. And uh, that shows tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the morning. That's Pacific time. So uh, um, one of the main questions asked is if you prep, what's your target? Are you trying to prep for a month, maybe three months? Two months I hear is pretty good. Um, and uh, my green screen's being weird today. And uh, uh, <laughs> squirrel, <laughs> are you prepping for six months or a year? Uh, are you getting so radical that you're putting a bomb shelter in your backyard? <laughs> uh, I don't think a lot of us are doing that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, how do we help people? So, you know, it, the, the whole controversy here is, do we help others? And it's like, I guess like prepping, it's it's a, take a little bit at a time. But uh, if you're going to be a prepper and your family knows you're a prepper, and of course, if I'm doing shows like this, I'm a prepper. I'll probably have half a central Oregon coming over here for if shit hit the fan. But uh, do you try to educate them and say, you know, you really should have at least a month's worth of some supplies? Because if you're relying on me, I'm going to, I got to make some tough decisions. I may have to say no. Uh, I, you know, I'm even thinking, uh, for example, I uh, hopefully maybe mail services still work. And let's say uh, I got these crazy 10 chickens, uh, all females are going to get ready to just in, uh, terrorize us with eggs and eggs and eggs and eggs. And uh, that'll be great at first. And then pretty soon we go, <laughs> we're going to have dozens and dozens of eggs in our refrigerator. What are we going to do? Well, that's why we bought the freeze dryer. Uh, if you ever seen those, we got a medium size. Every rack in there can hold 18 eggs. And you run them through the cycle, and then they turn into like a giant brick. Um, it, well, you have to uh, mix them all up like you're doing scrambled eggs first. And they dry out like brittle, peanut brittle. And then you just put them into a blender and turn it into powder. And uh, you could put 18 eggs in one sh th uh, uh, one shelf, and then you pour that into a um, into a jar, and you can vacuum seal it, and you got fresh egg forever. And they will taste and act like regular eggs. Like you want one egg, you just do one tablespoon, <laughs> put put in a a cup. You want two eggs, two two tablespoons. Add uh, the same amount of water to it, blend it together, and it's just like their original eggs, and uh, nice fresh eggs. So I'm thinking, okay, I could take these jars and, and have a bunch of those. And if like my daughter was hurting on food or something down in Phoenix, which is, you know, uh, I'm in Oregon, we could mail jars of food to her that's dried and it really wouldn't hurt us too much except for shipping. Um, but that shouldn't happen. My daughter should know better. She knows that we prep we, and she does. And she actually does do pretty good. She's got a big family of boys. So it's pretty hard to have any extra food around, <laughs> but they're, they're comfortable. They keep extra water. Of course, in Phoenix, you want to have lots of water. 
So, uh, and I was telling you, uh, also our well system, I put a backup system where I could plug a generator into it. And I, not only can I wa have water for the house 24 seven when I need it, um, I also can water our gardening sy uh, system in, in the back. And that's one of the reasons why we have a big garden being started. And we also have a greenhouse. And uh, uh, in wells, by the way, we always have a pressurized tank. We have a 50 gallon pressurized tank. So you turn on the, uh, all you have to do is if you're just using a little bit of water at a time is you turn on the generator, allow the, uh, the well to fill up that tank and you have water um, up to 50 gallons right off the bat for washing dishes and little things, washing hands and cooking. Um, but if I want to uh, water the uh, gardens in the back or take any of that, I turn on the generator and let it run while it goes through its watering cycles. So uh, anyway, so yeah, I mean, so a lot of preppers have got a lot of money involved here. And so uh, uh, then you kind of get to the part of, okay, my wife and I have worked hard to build up our supplies. We've worked hard to uh, um, make sure that we stored everything and preserved everything uh, so it'll last a long time. So then the big question is, uh, let's say uh, my great best friend uh, so far from Farm to Did Smith uh, comes over and says, we don't have any food and I know you're a prepper, Rob. Can we bargain, maybe trade with you? Well, trading probably, yeah, we could probably do that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, she's the sweetheart. She's your best friend in the world. It's like, do you feed them? Because if you give away food that can't be replaced, it's gone. So, uh, you know, uh, and I'm just, I'm going to, I'm using a friend's name because you come against that moral and ethical issue. Do you help others or do you help yourself? Do you just protect your family or protect others? Are, is your heart uh, so open that you'll help everybody you can, but at the same time you're sacrificing your own family? Where do you draw the line? Or oh, do you? Maybe you don't. I mean, as Christians, we all want to do our best to help one another and be understanding and giving. But also, you know, there's this things that teach us that we need to be as uh, individuals take action, um, be uh, individuals of being uh, uh, responsible. And uh, do we feed our friends? Would I feed Chandra? Yeah, I'd feed Chandra. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Would I feed my friend way over there in Scotland? I, I don't think I can afford the shipping. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so the answer to what me and Sherry are doing is we're prepping for all of our family. So I have prepping here that I have half of my, my boy and their family. Um, they try to be prepared. They do run their own garden. They have their own eggs. Um, and, uh, but they'll probably need a little help. And, and, and we realize that, you know, have a daughter that's down in Arizona now, Hey, you know, they're making great money and they're, you know, putting me to shame. But, uh, uh, if something happened, those jobs would stop paying. And so, and then it's almost like your watch stops. The world stops, the, the whole thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, some family. Yeah. So, yeah, then I got the other problem. And like I told you, we had a sister-in-law take all our toilet paper. Well, not all. Took a case of toilet paper. But they all know because they've been down here because they came down here to get stuff from the uh, state that we are preppers. They definitely saw it and uh, couldn't hide it. And uh, so now they all know that, hey, Rob and Sherry have got food. And if everything happens, we go down to Central Oregon and take a trailer or camp out in their yard and, you know, uh, eat their food. <laughs> it's like, I don't think so. <laughs> you, have to, you have to be a little nicer than that. So, uh, yeah, where do you draw the line? And uh, so, uh, yeah, we're prepping for that and even the fact that uh, – uh, cause I work when we we're in Arizona, we we're preppers and we grew food in Arizona preppers, but I'm telling you in Arizona, water is the nightmare. And if you had to say bug out and go on foot and things, uh, you'd be lucky if you can live through the 110 degree weather to hike up North. Um, so, uh, water is the thing there. You may have some in stock on this stuff, but eventually water is going to run out in a place like that and get, get water. It isn't like rivers around and lakes around. Um, 
that you can just kind of, you know, go get water and then also try to treat it. Uh, having a pool is nice for a while because you can take that water, run it through filtering systems and actually have drinkable water. But eventually that water in the pool will turn. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just all depends on how long you might be out of resources and utilities. Uh, I do want to remind everybody, this is only a half hour show. And so uh, we will be stopping here in about 10 minutes. So um, Chandra, I think people that have lived in the country or had big families are more inclined to prep for big events. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I, um, if I, like I started my prepping in Arizona, I lived out in a rural area, um, outskirts. Um, I guess they call it urban. Um, and I had a bigger family. I s would definitely prep. I mean, in accordance to however big my family is. Um, but out in the country, um, I'm not prepping any different. If that helps with that statement at all. Um, uh, I would still prep the same. Um, I have more room for more preps here. But once again, it's like, where do you draw the line to? And it is scary. Um, we may ha have like grid go down. We may not have solar flare or anything like that. But this food situation is getting really insane. And it really has to do with our distribution system. And I know, I swear, <laughs> I swear that there's young adults out there that believe that food comes from the grocery store, that meat is from the grocery store. It just comes that way. Because I don't know how many times I've watched homestead people do shows and say they're growing chick uh, meat chickens or, or butchering their or hogs or anything like that or, or butchering their rabbits and they are, have a troll in there going, how could you do such a thing? That's cruel. Uh, this one show up in uh, Idaho, they have rabbits they butchered and they, dish, they didn't show the butchering, which YouTube doesn't like that anyway, um, but they showed the end result and they're walking from uh, where they butchered it to the house to put it in the, you know, to process it, to put in the freezer. And a bunch of people were offended that they saw a butchered rabbit hanging from her as she was carrying it. It's like, are you kidding me? Are we that far gone? Are we so far out of touch with the world that we don't know where our food comes from? Every chicken is you eat. All the chicken you eat is a chicken that goes buck, 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 buck and gets killed and and processed every chicken. I don't care if you're going to McDonald's. I don't care if you're going to K to a KFC or whatever. It's a chicken. It's a live chicken. And somewhere that you never see, it gets butchered and processed. So all you're seeing uh, with these far uh, homesteads is people processing their own food because one, they trust it better. Two, they can make sure it eats, uh, eats good food and it has a good life. And so for, the, for those of you guys out there who give people a hard time about butchering animals, I have met so many and watched so many that not, if they are butchering their own animals, they see to it that that animal has a good life, a healthy life, a comfortable life, has room and has healthy food and, and gets to act like a chicken or gets to act like a pig instead of being put in these little small areas of the live and just wait to die. Um, it's the, I mean, how, how much better can you make it for free ranging chickens and, and animals and stuff like that than what these, uh, homestead people are doing in farmsteads. Um, they're doing wonderful things, keeping in mind the quality of life for the animals that they are going to eat. And, uh, that's important in including dairy processing these cows and, and taking care of them properly and let them have a normal life as opposed to these crazy dairy farms. So the next time you start thinking about somebody being cruel or mean um, to uh, animals because they're butchering them, uh, we're all doing it. We all do it. And uh, so uh, <laughs> I got to laugh. I got two dogs that have just, please let us in. We want to terrorize you in the, in the studio today. And uh, they're being brats. So once again, I, I, I and I love to hear, I know people will catch this show afterwards. I want to thank everybody that left comments. I actually wasn't expecting any visitors. Um, 
And I am so grateful, always. Please take the time to also share our videos and uh, and like them and uh, tell the whole world about this stuff. Um, uh, this show will be turned to an audio also and be put on Good Talk Radio. So uh, this is episode 65. So we've done actually quite a few shows. But uh, it's really an interesting thing is, wow, when things really happen and people actually call you or, or show up at your house and say, we had to come down here. We don't have food in Washington. We don't have food in Arizona. Can we stay with you? Can we camp out on your property? Can you feed us? What are you going to say? What are you going to do? What's the ethical and, and, and ethic issues and all that? Um, this breaks your heart. But then you got to kind of say, you know, I took the time to be responsible. I took action. I decided that I was going to be prepared. And you didn't. And you even knew that I was doing that. And then now you want to come and take advantage of our family and actually reduce our resources that we may not be able to uh, stay, uh, be uh, independent as long. Um, where do you draw that line? Is that cruel? Is that an awful thought? Or do you just prep like, you know, I'll get two years worth of food, which I really only want a year, but that way for anybody that comes along, um, I can help them out. But how, you know, how crazy could that get? I mean, the word gets out and people goes, hey, Rob's feeding people. There's nothing at the grocery store. Um, now bartering, that might be helpful, but I can't eat, you know, uh, now It'd be great to have a, oh, by the way, community. I want to make sure we talk about this. I would, it's kind of tough. You don't want to tell a lot of people your preppers. But at the same time, if you find like-minded people, um, they may be growing potatoes and they just love to grow potatoes. That's all they do is grow potatoes. And maybe you're growing uh, a lot of strawberries and things like that or green beans. You know, uh, you could set up a community where each organizations like everybody around us has about five acres. So if everybody was doing something to create their own resources and you traded, that would be an awesome thing. Um, one is uh, because when problems happen, uh, you know, you hear these people talking about being lone wolves and I'll go out in the woods and live in a tent and hide from everybody. Uh, that's the worst thing you could do. One is you're hiking around with a pack on your back. You're just telling everybody, Hey, that guy, let's shoot him and take his pack because his pack's got to be full of a lot of goodies. Um, that's just plain old walking advertising. Take this man out. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so uh, uh, besides, we get my age, we're too fat and ugly to be hiking uh, in 110 degree weather trying to get north. I, I wouldn't make it. But anyway, I'd love to hear your comments below. Uh, if you're prepping, would you share your preps? Would you share your preps with a friend? Would you share your preps with neighbors? Would you just share your preps with a family down the road that has a baby and they have no food? Um, and then do you draw the line like, hey, guys, we we prepared for this and you didn't and you knew just as well as I did that things were getting hard and uh, you did nothing. Why are you going to uh, sacrifice my resources because of your ignorance? What a terrible thing to, th to say, huh? <laughs> I'm so sorry. But uh, that's the truth. So anyway, guys, I got to scoot. This is only a half hour show. I want to thank you very much. And once again, please share our videos. Please leave your comments. Thank you for listening. And we'll catch you next time. So bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.